check. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, global crypto enthusiasts. This is 88 Fantastic coming to you June 20th, 2019 with a quick market update, a little bit of news for you, some serious discrepancy in numbers that I found last night that I'll bring to your attention here soon. Also, we want to talk about NEO's mainnet 3.0, its price, and we are going to look at who owns how much of what in wallets. Um, we had done that a little bit earlier in the year just to show people that how certain companies own so much of their own project. I have no idea why you'd even, unless you're day trading it, I have no idea why you would invest into something where the owners own 80% of it or 90% of it. But anyways, uh, let's just have a quick look at the price here. We see Bitcoin at $9,345 with a market cap of 288.6 billion and a trading volume of 53.46 billion for 24 hours and what we're seeing right now is the exact same thing that we saw in all of march all of april and all of may and we are seeing all of the altcoins continuously get pumped up and bleed right back into bitcoin so now we see that the smart money and the smart traders are no longer just crushing the market for profit they are now crushing the entire market like they did for three consecutive months like we were talking about and they are putting it all back into bitcoin this market looks good, but again, you look at the daily prices, ETH was at 275, ain't getting back there, hasn't gotten back there, XRP was at 45, Litecoin was at 140, Bitcoin Cash was at 430, EOS was over seven bucks, Binance Coin is now crawling back up with the KuCoin help or it would be dying. BSV was over two and a quarter. Stellar was at 14. Cardano was at 11. Tron had almost hit four. I could keep going down and down the list. And as we see the altcoins continually get pumped up people are getting cycled out and with the profit that they're taking from those cycled out uh, uh, traders it's all going back into Bitcoin for me I'm happy with that I'm a Bitcoin supporter but I'm also an altcoin supporter as well so to see that um, the cycle hasn't changed and the one thing let's get into the, the, the discrepancy that I saw first and it starts at the number six spot with EOS okay so here over a coin market cap we see EOS with a market cap of 6.2 billion, and we see it at a 24-hour trading volume of 1.8. Now we'll come over to CoinGecko. We see it's got a 24-hour volume of 2.7, almost 2.8 billion, and a market cap of 7 billion. Okay, so we'll look at the same thing over at Coin Market Cap, or Coin Checkup, sorry, and EOS. You see again at 6.21 billion and a 24 hour volume of 1.8 so where is there's one billion dollars missing between these three exchanges or these three websites on the reporting there's a billion dollars missing and there's 700 million dollars in market cap where did where is it anybody explain that to me now you can come out and say what you want to say but this is what's been happening for the last three days and it actually hasn't changed so I don't know what's happening there now. The other one I discovered was Cardano. So now we see Cardano with a market cap of 282 and or a market cap of 2.7. Let's see if we can pop it up a little bit better on this screen. There we go. Market cap of 2.7 billion and a 24 hour trading a supply of 282 million. Now we'll come check out Cardano over here. You got a 24 hour volume of 150 and a market cap of 2.78. So 150, there's another, the, 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 on CoinGecko, they're showing twice the volume, twice the volume. And the market cap is 500 million behind. So anyways, let's just have a look at the quick 24. That, that's just, again, something, these are the things that I pick up on. So really other than Bitcoin and Binance coin, you're not seeing a whole bunch right now. Um, everything in here, it doesn't matter what we've been showing for green in the 24 hours because it's going to change tomorrow and it's just going to go into Bitcoin anyways, which is awesome. But still, again, every loser is all going straight back into Bitcoin. So um, the other thing we wanted to show you guys was this article um, from two days ago and it was over at bravenewcoin.com talking about the NEO's uh, 3.0 update. Uh, talking about how NEO is uh, mostly centralized, which we've all known. And again, that's why I love NEO so much, is they've been openly working with government. And in 2017 and 18, that was the worst thing because everybody wanted decentralized. And now you're seeing with regulation kicking in, 
Maybe people understand now that decentralized and regulation need to work hand in hand. You can't just have, we don't want one or the other, we want both to work together. So the other thing I wanted to show in here is um, the price of networks, the network's native token, also called NEO, which acts as a share of the blockchain and is as a way to access network governance rights has risen by 77% since January of 2019. So what I wanted to show you guys was um, in the Are We Decentralized Yet? This shows you um, uh, voting rights. It shows you um, the number of public nodes. And it shows you the amount of money held by the top 100 wallets. Okay, I need a sip of coffee for this one. Now, when we first did this in January, the numbers had changed. There was a bunch of these in the 90% range. And you can't sit here and tell me that somebody at the Ripple company who originally owned between 95 and 98% of the entire supply gave 15% of that away. There's no way that happened. So I'm curious about that number. Neo's number has dropped down to below 50%. You see, even with NEM, 62%. IOTA, 61%. Nano, 60 Look at any, anything over about 30% is, is scary as hell. Look at Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Satoshi, 25% and 25%. Uh, voting rights, uh, four people, four people, that's it. Like, look at the voting rights. This is pitiful. Absolutely pitiful. Now, when they have NEOs down here, that's the entire council. But here, Ripple owner, NEM owner, two owners of Nano, et cetera, et cetera, right? So again, those are the things as a long-term investor you got to be careful with. With that, when one, uh, when eighty percent, um, what is Ripple's market right now? Let's go have a looky here. We see Ripple's markets uh, circulating. So, oh, I got to go back to this one. Jesus, it's got too many going here. And we were doing Ripple. So okay, so Ripple's uh, actual circulating supply is. Uh, 42.5 billion. So 80% of that is owned by a small, a very small group of people. So 80% own the vast majority of that number. So why would you long-term invest into that? I keep hearing the XRP is going to be the one world currency. How is it going to be the one world currency when you own less than 10% of it and uh, you can get crushed by the other 80%? So something to think about long term for you guys uh the other really cool thing we wanted to show you guys is we have actually peaked for the year so that's what i've been talking about for forever here i want to show you guys something really cool we have literally peaked we are right now at our maximum level that we've been at in exactly one year from june to june of 18 and 19 there's your chart there's your one year chart we are right there in the same spot and right here, from that 288 down to 220, that's what I expected to happen this week, and it, it did not happen. So, in being wrong in an, a six to eight week, uh, 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 six to eight week prediction of the forecast, um, I was wrong because that's what exactly what I expected. So, to say at least I went 50 percent, what I did say was, is if we didn't hit that, we were still going to see stronger lines of support every time we sell off, and we've seen that. We have totally seen that in the last three months. Every sell-off, we got stronger, and the lines of support at the bottom got even stronger. So good on everybody in the market there. So I, as we sit right now, we haven't been able to get past that $291 billion mark. That's the key indicator right now. If we hit 291, what are we going to do? Are we going to dump all the way back, or are the lines of support actually going to hold? We're not going to predict on that right now because the news... Um, like we said for the last year, the news has been so good for a year, you just got to hang in there. Now we see the news, same as last year, just as good. And now we see actually people starting to hold. So good for you guys. Now we'll go over to, we got two articles or two websites to show you guys today. We got CryptoNinjas.net, um, some interesting articles. Again, today I don't want to bust them out. I just want to show you guys there's some really cool stuff. Uh, NEM launches new development unit to propel next generation protocol. Super awesome stuff. Crypto exchange buy box partners with Eon, E-O-N, e -O -N, to launch a staking support, which is really good news. I'm a big fan of staking. Um, what If you're not sure what staking is, staking basically means you're leaving coins on different platforms. And as long as you're not trading out those coins, they'll give you a, a percentage or a bonus on that. Very good stuff to see. Uh, Digex partners with Wisp 
allowing payroll in the DGX Gold token. Lightning Network Stores.com developing Bitcoin Lightning Network Store repository. Good to see. Uh, we've gone through all of this stuff already, or it's from yesterday. So again, over at CryptoNinjas.net, you got some news on them. Uh, BuyBox, uh, MakerDAO, and Digex. What else we got over here? We are over at the Bitcoinist.com, and there was one article I definitely wanted to check out for us. Um, right here, historical data suggests August is the best time to buy Bitcoin. And again, this is what we have talked about all year, and that's why I've been accurate with my forecast until today. So unless we lose 25 billion, it's 11 a.m. where I am, and by midnight, I will come out tomorrow and admit that my six to eight week forecast was off and wrong, and I'll admit that it was the second time I've been wrong since January of 2018. Not this year, but last year. So I've been, that would have been twice. The other time I was wrong was October of 2018 when CME came into the market and I thought, um, oh my God, the market's going to take off. But of course it didn't. Okay, so this, before I even scroll down this article, historically in the stock market, in every index, whatever market you've been in, cryptocurrency, the end of May, all of June, uh, and the first two weeks of July, that nine, eight, nine weeks span has traditionally, for decades, been the worst time to buy. Get out by May, get back by, buy back in again by September type of thing, right? So what I haven't looked at this, is, so I want to see what it says. Uh, the rundown: August is historically the worst month for Bitcoin price. Uh, Bitcoin could be in a two-month-long two-month lull going by historical data it's crazy how you pump this article out now and i've been talking about this for a fucking year like, oh my god but there we go we see the seasonal for the bitcoin there bitcoin has always seemed to suffer seasonal summer decline usually lasting from june the 6th to october 8th on average okay i'll let you guys come in here and look at this because again this is exactly what we've been talking about basically since january of 2019 when we started having this channel and now it's just again we need to get some love in this channel and get some people here get me up to a thousand fucking subs already because now you're seeing articles and pe these people get paid to do this and this is stuff we've been talking about for six and a half months on this channel and the last two months in social media as a whole oh my god anyways let's uh, give this a quick refresh here and we'll see where the market is standing now see bitcoin at 93.50 and what's our cap going to be at here we were at 288 there for a little bit but again, things to come out and look at. Again, when you see wallets like that, again, this is not uh, financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But when somebody owns, and again, this is off. It's got to be off because when we did this in January, this ripple number was, I think, at 95 or 96%. And I really don't see uh, rich uh, people like these guys going out and giving away a few billion of their, uh, their hard-earned money. All right, so we still see Bitcoin at 93.50. We got our market cap crawling up again. We're almost at that 289 mark. And as we can see over here, we haven't been able to get past the two. On this one, it's 289. And on coin market cap, I do believe the highest we've gotten was 291. We'll double check that again real quick. When it's not spinning out of control. There we go. Again, over here too, it's showing the same thing as at 288. But I have seen our market cap as high as 291. And then that's where we literally keep getting stuck is at the 291 mark and then they're scaling back. And you know what? The scale backs are so minimal right now. That's the other scary thing that we haven't seen yet is the actual scaling back. We've had no profit taking since uh, June the 3rd, basically, where we had our last $30 billion dump. And then the one before that was our May 30th with another $30 billion dump. So just something to keep your eye on. Again, come check out the great news. Um, always good things happening in this cryptocurrency market. And um, just watch that market cap right now because we haven't been able to get past the 291 mark and it seems to crawl back to about that 285 mark. So if you're a guy that's day trading and swing trading, it's really not hard to see when the market gets back up to 285, there's money coming into the market. When the market's hitting that 290, 291, they're scaling back. So that's where your wave counts don't matter. That's where your candle counts don't matter. If you go back and look at from the middle of March, right until may the end of may 29th it's been the exact same patterns the exact same patterns 
anyways that's the last little bit of tip i got for you guys again get out there share sub hit that bell get some people on here we're showing news that we've been showing for six and a half months that people are just coming out to show you guys right now and it's very frustrating watching them collect a paycheck and we can't even collect a dollar off of youtube yet so help a brother out people it's 88 fantastic showing you how to take a bite out of the cryptocurrency market take care y'all